This is a MacBook Pro from 2021, and I've been thinking, could it replace your gaming PC? Because honestly, I don't have a PC, but do you really need one? To find out, we're putting a MacBook Pro M1 Max and your average gaming PC head to head, with points awarded for compatibility, user experience, and of course, performance. <laughs> and I'm just gonna say it, Apple may have a fighting chance here. This is Cyberpunk 2.0 running on my M1 MacBook. And let me tell you, it was a long night. So here's how we got here. Now look, I may not have a PC, but what I do have is hardcore FOMO every time a major release comes out. All these PC lads are out here playing Starfield and Cyberpunk 2.0, and I'm just over here playing Minecraft on my MacBook. I mean, it runs pretty well, it's pretty good, but still, surely, Apple Silicon is good enough now for AAA games. And that's where my curiosity kicked in. First things first, you need to be running macOS Sonoma to- Whoa, 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 before we dive too deep into downloading a bunch of random stuff so you can play games on your Mac, I gotta give you some background on how we got here. By the way, I'm at Disneyland. Let's be honest, gaming on a Mac hasn't been Apple's priority over the last few decades. But there must be something in the air at Apple HQ. Because at their Worldwide Developer Conference this year, Apple announced the Game Porting Toolkit. To make it even easier for developers to port their games from other platforms. What the heck? It's based on open source code from the company Codeweaver. They created apps like Wine and Crossover, allowing Mac users to run Windows apps for years. But the crazy thing is, Apple's toolkit takes this a step further. With support for DirectX 12, and man, progress has been wild over the last few months since it was released. I mean, look at this. These are major releases running on a Mac. I feel like more people should be talking about this. So with the help of this toolkit, could your Mac replace the average gaming PC and become the best all-in-one device? Well, maybe, but it's not gonna be that easy. Apple makes it pretty clear this tool is for developers and it's yet to be released for consumers. Now don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not a developer. Look at me, I couldn't be more a consumer if I tried. But thankfully, a mad lad called Andrew Sai has made a step-by-step -step guide on how to give it a go for yourself. But how does it stack up against your average PC? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's install the Game Porting Toolkit. Okay, now that we know what we're installing, is it even worth it? Is it even worth the time to justify installing it? I feel like a BBC reporter right now. <laughs> As the toolkit gets better, more and more games are becoming playable. You can check out a full list of compatible games over on Apple Gaming Wiki. So I'm gonna give the Mac four out of five stars, and I'm gonna give the PC five out of five because, uh, yeah, PC can play everything. Are we going on now? <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. First things first, you need to be running macOS Sonoma to make the most of the game porting toolkit. Next up, you head to the Apple developer site and download command line tools and the latest version of the toolkit. And man, from what I've seen, the fourth release has had some crazy results. Moving forward, you need to install Homebrew via Terminal. Homebrew makes it really easy to download and install all the software we're gonna need to make this work. Once Homebrew was installed, I then started copy and pasting a bunch of terminal code that I honestly probably should have done more research about. And now it's finally time to install the game porting toolkit. Heads up, this took about an hour to download and install all the required files. If you wanna dive deeper into exactly what I'm doing here, Make sure to check out the step-by-step -step guide that I've linked down below. After one last check that everything was installed, I think we're good to go. It was finally time to install Steam and buy Cyberpunk. I hope this works, man. Otherwise, I'm just dropping cash. <laughs> Downloading and installing Steam was pretty straightforward. But when it came to running Steam, yeah, I had a few problems. No matter how many times I ran the script, for some reason, Steam just wasn't starting. Apple Gaming Wiki does have instructions for troubleshooting it, but they didn't work either. I also tried to use Crossover to install and launch Steam, but that was having a hard time too. So you wanna know how I fixed it? I just kept running the same code over and over. <laughs> and thank goodness, man, Steam finally started. With Steam downloaded, I was able to buy Cyberpunk and so far so good, man. It didn't take long for Cyberpunk 2077 to install. All right, let's rate the user experience. Yeah, look, it's not outstanding. But hey, considering this isn't for consumer use, it's not, it's not bad. And it wasn't that difficult either. It just took time. Like lining up in a line at Disney. Am I right? 
So I'm going to give the Mac four out of five stars. And for your standard PC user, one out of five, because Windows. I'm kidding, I'm going to give it a five out of five because it's so easy to start and play a game on a PC. But what we're really all here to see is the performance. And this is where things get kind of crazy. <laughs> Whoa. First impressions. I had a pretty good feeling it would work. Plenty of other people have done it and it's worked. But I didn't expect it to work this well. I was getting about 58 frames, almost 60 frames. And it looks good. Dude, I don't need a console or a PC. I'm impressed, Apple. I'm very impressed. All right, it's been a few days since I got this working and whew, I know I keep saying it, but I'm just so impressed at how well this runs. As expected though, the FPS isn't the best. I was getting around 35 frames or so, which is still playable. It's just not as smooth as you would like it to be. But then I realized that's because I was running it on battery. You potato. <laughs> Once I plugged it in, I was getting around 50 frames consistently. The MacBook was running pretty hot, but generally it was handling it really well. Keep in mind, this is running at a resolution of 1512 by 982 on medium settings. So it's not the sharpest looking image that I've had on this MacBook display. What did blow my mind though, was the dynamic range. The darks are darks and the lights are unreal. Every now and then you can see some tearing, but even in heavy situations, it held a constant frame rate. Wild. I don't mind playing with a keyboard and mouse, but for me, playing with a controller was way more enjoyable. Maybe I'm not a PC guy after all, <laughs> but look, man, holy dooly. The idea that I can play a game that's this big and this heavy and for it to still look so good. I don't know if my expectations are just really low or if the MacBook really does come through. The fact that this is only the start of the game porting toolkit literally blows my mind. And it wouldn't surprise me if this video is completely redundant in a few years because it was just kind of normal. Let's rate the performance on a PC. Uh, I'm gonna give a PC five out of five. Generally, there's no dramas with performance on a PC, unless you got a trash PC. But for the Mac, I'm gonna have to give it a three out of five because it's possible, but ugh. 